Thank you very much for having me, Victoria. My name is Gabor Gurbach. Uh, I'm Director of Digital Asset Strategy at Vanek and uh, Williams graduate, class of 2014. Um, I've been a mathematics, uh, German, and sociology major. Oh my God, Three classes major. away from my fourth major. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, done a lot of Williams uh, and, uh, you know, actually fell in love with uh, crypto uh, at Williams. So, um, really excited to uh, be on with you guys and uh, respective backgrounds. Uh, I was an international student at Williams. Uh, I grew up in Hungary, um, went to Deerfield Academy to complete my postgraduate year, fell in love with the uh, Berkshires in Massachusetts area, uh, went to Williams, extremely good experience during my visit with the math department. And I knew at that moment that I want to be there. So <laughs> I, I went to Williams and uh, pretty sort of like uh, exciting, um, declared, uh, started multiple majors and just kept working on them and loved mm -hmm. math, uh, loved the small college environment, didn't love the, you know, eight months of winter <laughs> <laughs> weather, but uh, sort of, uh, yeah, it, it, it was great. And then um, had a good time in, in school. Um, yeah. Is, is this about the right intro? Yeah, uh, no, no, no. I love it. It's so fun to hear the stories. Um, you know, I think when you say that first, uh, that you fell in love with crypto at Williams, I'm immediately curious as to what prompted that slash you know was it a person that introduced you to it did you just happen to stumble upon it um what was that like yeah so uh, actually you know technically i fell in love with crypto and uh at the budapest uh, institute of technology i've um, done my freshman year um summer research um, back in hungary but uh wow. where in my view some of the best mathematicians come from and uh, you know, in particular in the uh, discrete mathematics graph theory and and, and sort of uh, information security space we have a long history of last lolovas paul erdos and sort of like the great discrete mathematicians are out of Hungary, and mm -hmm. uh, I got to work with uh, you know, some of those guys during uh, my summer internship. And uh, it's pretty incredible. Uh, yeah, it's, it was uh, sort of um, you know the uh, I was working a little bit just research uh, at the Budapest Institute of Technology, uh, and uh, out of that I met a group of interested uh, kids who, are, well, kids sort of my age, <laughs> who were uh, really into uh, sort of uh, discrete mathematics and graph theory. And, uh, and network theory. So mm -hmm. um, network theory is, is, is an interesting subject. Uh, networks are sort of describe our world, the world of money, social media, um, politics, and pretty much everything, protein synthesis, and oh. you know, a lot of different- <laughs> The folds, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, and so um, one of the uh, initial uh, network scientists uh, who established the field of network theory is from Hungary and uh, you know, inspired by some of his books, I actually did research with, um, with some of his colleagues and mm -hmm. ended the place where he built his background. And some of the, uh, so the students um, in the, who I met in the dormitory uh, after sort of my research program, they were telling me about this network theory concept for money. And this was like, you know, some electronic coin, this thing called Bitcoin, and you can just <laughs> turn it on your computer and mine. Uh, yeah. New coins. yeah, 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 with the graphics and so, cards. Like, and and that, so that sort of was like, okay, how do you do that? And so we started researching that area. Uh, one of my um, sort of group mates there also uh, sort of sent money uh, to uh, to a guy in Romania to buy a, a few hundred Bitcoins. <laughs> You know, basically what happened then, so crypto trading back in 2011 was you send, basically, uh, there were no crypto exchanges. Literally, like 2011, there was just, yeah. in, in, in Eastern Europe, there were no crypto exchanges. So you basically uh, send money through Western Union or some, like, specifically, yeah. you know, <laughs> through Western Union and to a random person. Um, who will send you a private key and a public key in two separate emails. So that was the first Bitcoin purchase that I've seen. And it was just like, that was kind of incredible. And then we looked up the address and you have Bitcoins and that address was like, wow, this is crazy. And then we were looking at, at how to mine Bitcoins using our computers. And back in that day, you could mine uh, 50 coins in a you know, few wow. days. Wow, long-term <laughs> investment today, that'd be worth a lot more. <laughs> Yeah, and, and we were just sort of, uh, you know, that, that's how I started. And then I went back to uh, Williams. I did, you know, research over that summer. I was intrigued by the concept of uh, 
network money and non-sovereign or non-government issued money mm -hmm. so that people can you know create their own monies and spend it and if your reputation is good enough that someone will take your money right yeah uh, so um Actually, so through that experience, I, I, I got really kind of intrigued and then I went back to Williams uh, and then uh, sort of for a few years forgot about it and just like it wasn't of interest. I was grinding mm -hmm. sophomore year, added majors, you know, junior year, I really needed to get the internship so that yeah. I can get a real job. Uh, and then uh, my sort of... Uh, you know, advisors and uh, parents were saying, like, I wanted to work in crypto, but everyone says that I should have a real job. So I went to work um, for Vanek. Um, yeah. Jan Vanek, our CEO, is also a Williams guy. Very yeah. Nice dude. Yeah. I talked to Tucker a ton. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Williams family and uh, really like Jan. I got uh, three offers actually at that uh, time, three additional offers. Mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to in addition to my Vanek uh, offer. Mm -hmm. And Vanek was a private company with a cool CEO who, you know, would work with me and would mentor me. And uh, yeah. so I joined Vanek as an uh, analyst, financial analyst, and promised Jan that I'll be the best analyst that the firm has seen. And uh, big promises. I I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really wanted to work with him. So um, I think I uh, became a really good analyst. And uh, Three years uh, into my career with Vanek, I started working with Jan directly on crypto uh, investing and, and creating a regulated and uh, professional environment for crypto funds. And ever since we you know, create funds, have built the, uh, the first regulated crypto indices in the world. Uh, mm -hmm. Firm is seven, 75 billion. Uh, we have about two plus billion in crypto indexed assets uh, mm -hmm. to our subsidiary. So applying for the sort of the first Bitcoin ETF and uh, and investing into the best and brightest minds uh, in, in the space with uh, the Vanek team. Yeah, no, I think that's an incredible journey. I'm also curious though, you know, when you start off as a financial analyst and you know in the back of your mind, oh, I'm really interested in crypto, mm -hmm. you know, how did you kind of approach or if Jan already had this in his mind already regarding crypto, like how did you kind of convince people this is something to pivot towards ahead of everyone else, right? Like, I think that is the thing with um, like all the indices now is like, everyone's like, oh, now we need to like get into it. All the banks are behind yeah. it now too. But like, you know, being ahead of the curve, how did you really convince people that this is a necessary path? Yeah. So I think the boat sort of like Jan and I are similar innovation minded and the mm -hmm. firm is innovation minded. So we understand that the greatest value uh, created is by being early in an industry. So, okay. you know, I built with the team the first esports ETF, Green Bond mm -hmm. ETF, and new new stuff that was unconventional or risky at the time. But investing in that space early and being early uh, accrues you, you know, a few thousand, few ten thousand times the return when you are the late majority. So, we specifically focus on those areas and. Um, I, you know, Yom is nice enough to, uh, you know, I think probably his kids, uh, some of them go with Williams also told them to <laughs> look at this area. But, uh, you know, as a younger generation, we've been pushing this and then uh, the firm was receptive eventually. And the investment that it takes to uh, to get, you know, to be involved in the space is not as big as uh, as one might think. So. I, my message is on this is if you have an idea, be it crypto, be it something else, just mm -hmm make sure that if it's small enough from an expense perspective, bring it up and don't give up on it. And, and so that's what I did. Just brought it up and didn't give up on it. And there are ideas that took me, you know, the esports ETF took me a few years to get, to convince the team to pursue yeah. it. <laughs> Pursued it and, you know, our European and, and US strategy combined is more than $2 billion now. Same with the crypto indices and, uh, Sometimes and often you fail with those ideas, but when you succeed with a few, then you're good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. And I think I'm also curious. So, you know, we talked about how you had other offers straight out of undergrad. And I'm assuming straight out of undergrad till now, you've stayed at Van Eck. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what kind of keeps you there? Slash, um, was there anything that, you know, really incentivized you to stay or was it like other contextual reasons? Yeah, so if, if, a few things. I think, you know, I, I joined Van Eck from undergrad and uh, mm -hmm. the 
there's there's a number of offers every week you get an email if you're good that someone wants to hire you it doesn't mean that you should pursue that opportunity yeah. i think <laughs> it's you know it's true so the there is great value in loyalty and learning and learning an organization inside out and so i value that i value loyalty and long long termism and i believe that if you generate value to a company it will generate value to you so that's actually one thing that i would recommend to people that while you might get a you know, few extra percent of raise as you jump from job to job um eventually the greatest again the greatest value created is when you create value to a company and hard work actually accrues so okay. that's what kept me there and frankly the team is great you know it's a 75 billion dollar private company not yeah. many private yeah. companies <laughs> with that type of asset range and uh being private allows us to take a long-term vision and investing into early technologies early teams larger banks you know that are late to this game are not able to do this because they live quarter to quarter they report to outside shareholders and so being in the private space or being in a startup or being at a you know somewhere that some company that is willing to focus for in something for a longer period of time is what kept me at van Eck. and <laughs> and yeah and again the opportunity to work with um, the ceo of the company has really helped me in sort of taking on new strategic initiatives to do deals with people in the crypto space. And uh, that was it's just a great growth trajectory for me personally and tons of responsibility. And I aged like, you know, 30 years in my seven years of working for Vanek, but it's just, uh, I think it's, it's awesome that you can do stuff like that. No, yeah, yeah that does sound awesome. Um, I guess the follow-up question is also, I know we had a very kind of turmoil period with Bitcoin these past recent months. Um, what do you kind of foresee in terms of, is this kind of tumultuous period? Do you anticipate it continuing or like stabilizing over time? Um, yeah. I'm sure for you as well, like from a work perspective, you hope that it stabilizes, but um, what does that look like to you? Yeah, so a few things there. I think the underlying technology for Bitcoin and digital assets is revolutionary and it's building the new financial system. Mm -hmm. Banks and brokerages will be obsolete. Crypto is making and Bitcoin the financial system obsolete. So <laughs> it is becoming the actual financial system. So I, mm -hmm. I don't have any worries about um, the space going away at this point. I think some of the technologies are Coinbase is coming to market. What is the day today? It's the 12th in two days. Mm -hmm. the, the market capitalization of Coinbase is expected to be bigger than the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ combined. Yeah. This is a company that's ran for eight, eight years. And there's companies who are worth tens of billions of dollars um, and working on a company that's actually going to come to market soon. It's interesting. And uh, the you know that that sort of uh, the structure and money that is investing into crypto is just here to stay because it's more more efficient technology mm -hmm. like paper stock trading when e-trade came to market mm -hmm. there was no like electronic stock trading yeah. electronic stock trading is a thing now no one trades uh sort of uh you know paper stock <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so so basically i think the the underlying technology is, is, is crucial into developing the, the financial markets that will define Victoria, our generation. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about, you know, Russell 2000 value uh, portion of the stocks, but we talk about esports, Bitcoin, thematic investing, innovation yeah. investing. So our generation is just investing into different sort of uh, teams. And, and I'm, again, I'm, I'm not worried. With respect to looking at the price, um, I, you know, I said this before that Bitcoin has gone through 80% correction cycles. It will probably not go through an 80%. There might be a 50% downturn. But then again, today, the market capitalization of Bitcoin is larger than any of the banks. Yeah. <laughs> Morgan, Bank, <clears throat> Bank of America, they're all smaller than Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> why are people not asking whether those banks will be around? I mean, we, we give them, no, seriously, like we give them yeah. the benefit of the doubt. And then, uh, and sort of a lot of the, you know, the largest investment bank, Lehman Brothers, disappeared. Yeah, <laughs> you know? it did. And yeah. Every currency sort of currencies usually, fiat currencies have a 30, 35 year life cycle. The euro is 20 years, oh, sorry, 30 years old, roughly. So 
who knows whether those things will be around. So I, I think I usually like to put things in perspective that new, like new technologies make old technologies obsolete and we should have like a fair view of evaluating other companies and sort of fiat currencies, whether they will be around. I think it's a bigger question to me whether the dollar will be the dominated currency or if the banks, the top 10 banks we know will be different names. Some of my, you know, the friends of mine who are going to market, like including Coinbase and eToro, they all lead multiple $10 billion companies. Mm-hmm. You know, we were having sort of, you know, out of the yard discussions a few years ago. Yeah. And in 10 years, we might not recognize the top 25 stocks in the S&P 500. So mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. I just, again, the, the takeaway here is when you get the opportunity to work in a new area, being early in a new area accrues the greatest value. And as a young person at Williams, you should take risks in joining those companies or like out of your first few years or something, try something new at your Mm -hmm. firm. Yeah, no, that's really powerful. And I think, you know, when you're taking that kind of risk, um, I guess if you, we could wrap up on the note where um, you would give a piece of advice to students in terms of not like actually taking the leap because we know that's what you're arguing for. But when you are taking that kind of leap, was there any like mental preparation you would have wanted yourself to have, or is there anything you would have told yourself to be different about? I No, I, I mean, I would do the same thing, except like maybe, you know, try to force what I wanted to do earlier and harder. So okay. I think that, it's just my recommendation to to any student is just to go for it, work incredibly hard and then get your ideas true. Like just don't give up on them. Another person likely doesn't know your ideas better than you do. So Mm -hmm. work really hard and not give up. And with respect to job prospects, I always said, you know, in Williams, there's this saying that, uh, oh, I feel like uh, the career search uh, process is my fifth class. And so usually what I say is like, no, it's not your fifth class. It's your first class. You need to get a job. <laughs> like yeah. you need to get something that uh, sort of gives you, takes you to the next step of your career and no class is more important in your pot. Like coming from a triple major, he tells us this. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm saying, so usually I took like five, six classes on average during a semester and career search and keeping in touch with uh, mentors, prospects, was my first class because the next step is always important. Like you should obviously do well in schools, but like getting, like if you are, if you have gotten a, let's just say you get an A in a class or you get a B, you know, B is a terrible grade apparently. So the, if you get a, you know, get a B in a class and you secure a great job, like say with Vanag, Goldman, Facebook, Google, crypto, Coinbase, crypto company of your choice, and you get paid a ton, is it better to get an A in the class so that your GPA will be you know, a few points higher or just have your life secured? And the answer is obviously, it's better if you have a good job, it's better you, if you know like 10 people in a career space that will help you with the next five, 10 years of your life. So again, the advice is once, when you want to take that leap into any career, career and doesn't need to be in crypto, work hard, go for it and prioritize it. Prioritization, be it, you know, the job search, the company that you're going to work for is your first class. And and that often requires, again, this skill of prioritization is the most important skill that I learned and uh, and, and actively making this, you know, first choice, career as a first choice is is sort of um, what I would recommend to anyone.